Here we have a linkage which traces out a symmetrical coupler curve. And what I want to talk about is something called parallel motion. Let me just start this simulation here. Here we see our coupler kind of following this path, tracing out this path on this coupler path. And we can see this triangular shaped coupler here rotating as it traces out this path. And what I want you to imagine is what if we didn't want that rotation? What if we wanted that coupler path to be traced out but without any rotation of the coupler as it goes about? What you can imagine is a situation where perhaps we had a light. Let's say we wanted to shine a light. Maybe there was a wall here and we wanted to shine a light from this point, we had a light attached to this point of the coupler um, line, a BE line, and we want that light to kind of just shine over here and kind of go up and down. Now we still have this motion that we're doing, right? But we want the light to simply shine on the wall. Well, that's not going to work so well with this particular design because right now the light's going to be shining down at the floor, right? And it's still shining down at the floor, and now it's shining on the wall. Now it's shining directly on the wall where we want it. And it's still on the wall, but now it's starting to point down at the wall, at the floor again. And so the question comes, if we want to follow a path, but we don't want to have rotation of our coupler while we're doing that motion, what we're really looking for then is some kind of parallel motion, right? In this case, something parallel to this wall. So if the wall was here along this uh, vertical line. Um, we would want our coupler to follow that path but to remain parallel to the wall at all times. And to do that, um, we're really going to be using um, the cognates that uh, you may have learned about previously. If you haven't, I suggest you first review cognates, and then the way we're going to go about um, designing the parallel motion linkage will make more sense. But before we get started, let's just look at a few points um, related to um, parallel motion. Again, um, we want an output link to follow a path with no rotation of the link. Um, there's a couple of steps to this. First, we're going to find a four bar linkage that gives the right coupler path. So we got to start off with the path that we know that we want. And we just saw that in the force effect motion app. Then we're going to use a cognant to replicate the coupler motion. So we're going to use a cognant to create another linkage, right? The, I, the definition of a cognant is another linkage that has the same coupler curve, the same exact coupler curve. And then we're going to add a new link attached to both couplers. So we're going to kind of take these two linkages. Um, they're both tracing out the same coupler path, and we're going to add a new link between the couplers, and that link will not rotate as those um, as the cranks for each rotate. Um, an example in your text outlines this procedure. I'm going to go ahead and show a little bit more here. And so <clears throat> let's take as an example the following um, linkage and the coupler path here. We're saying we think that's a good coupler path. However, we want to trace out that coupler path without any rotation. Well, we first go about creating um, the other two cognates for this particular linkage and you see them here in the Roberts diagram. And so we have um, the original cognate here, a new cognate here with this new ground location and this um, second quad uh, cognate there. So co uh, cognate one, cognate two, cognate three. And um, we're going to focus in on this third cognate here. Um, you may recall when we first talked about cognates, um, we showed that they trace out the same coupler path, and we can see that here, this point P is going to trace out this path for all three of these cognates. And so what we do at that point is we're going to take our third cognate, and we're going to recognize that um, there's a couple of um, links here that have the same angular velocity and those two of those links are the crank here for cognate number one and the crank here for cognate number three and so if we can move this cognate such that this crank becomes connected with this crank here kind of basically sliding it down like break it here break it here and kind of slide it down what we can do there is use one motor at this location which will turn um, this first cognate and turn the second one because then we're 
moving this OC point down to OA. And we can kind of show that happening here. So you may recall that cognate 3 was originally up here, and we've slid it down, and we've connected link 7 to our link 2 here. Um, and so let's just go back quickly and see that. So here was our link 7. We're going to bring it down and connect it here to link 2. And they have the same angular velocity. And so what we can do here at this location is we can then connect, kind of make a triangular shaped uh, link here so that when we put a motor here, we're turning both cognate 1 and cognate 3 at the same time. Um, notice the point P that was initially here for this third cognate when it was up above. Uh oh, that's not good. Let's see where we are here. Just bear with me while I find where we need to be. Okay. Okay, right here. Okay, so when we look here, um, that coupler point was there um, and now since we slid everything down this coupler point has also slid down. Now note that we're sliding this down in such a manner that we're not allowing any rotation or any change in the link. So the angle that we see here, the angle that we see here, these angles are maintained. So we're just simply taking that point, we want to move it to here along this dotted line. And when we do that, all the points um, are following the same parallel dotted line. So you can imagine a dotted line here for that point, a dotted line here for this point, a dotted line here for that point. So they're all just sliding down and we see that here. And so we slid down and so the coupler point for a cognate 3 is now here at this location. Um, and so what we can do is if we connect this coupler point with this coupler point using this link here, right, a new output link 8. What we're going to find is since this point is going to trace out the same path as this point on cognate 1, every point along this new link is tracing out the same coupler path. So this is going to be our parallel motion link. And so now if we look at this figure, we see that some of this stuff we don't need. Um, for example, really there's no benefit to this part of the mechanism same as this part of the mechanism. We really don't need it. And so really what we're going to do is we're going to ace out that part and that part and just connect this link back up to this location. And we do that here. And so now we have a linkage that has its input here that traces out this parallel, um, these parallel couplers. So every point along this new link 8 traces out the same path. And so I'm going to show this um, being created in the force effect motion um, uh, application um, where we before worked on this particular linkage and we're saying okay we like that coupler curve we want to do it but we want to do it in a parallel fashion and so first thing I'm going to do is kind of kind of did some of this ahead of time and this is the Roberts diagram going to kind of let's kind of focus in here um, now this is after doing the Cayley diagram. This is based on the cognate study or lesson that we've already, I'm, I'm hoping that you have already seen or that you're familiar with cognates. And so after doing that Cayley, we are now in almost the Roberts where we've pulled our ground points back down. And we're almost connected here. And what we want to focus in on is our original cognate, which is this one. If we had a leg here, our original crank original triangle, right, the original coupler there, and the original um, output link. And uh, two new cognates where we have one here, a small one, and then a bigger link here, right? Our new ground position is right here, this L. And it's kind of hard to see because it's so close there, but as we move C and G closer together, we'll see L come down a bit. And I want to show you um, what that new cognate looks like when it's all by itself. Let's see what we got here. Um, that's that new cognate. So let me just zoom in on that and show you what that looks like. And so as you see, this is the third cognate. Um, it's tracing out the same coupler curve that you just saw. Notice it has 04, the same ground position that the previous one had, but it has this new ground position, which was L in the previous figure that was very close, kind of hard to see, but in this case, it's labeled E. Okay, and so it's chase, tra um, tracing out the same coupler curve. And so now if we go back, just kind of zoom in, 
go back a little bit you can see um, sorry about this I got a lot of stuff in here okay so now we can kind of see so here's that third cognate here's that ground position it's going to be the same ground position as the original and then there's that new ground position L which is going to be a little bit lower when we're ready and so what we really want to do is we want to shift right because we have this crank position for the original one we want to shift this cognate and this link and this ground position we want to shift them all down because the link that we have here going from the coupler to the new ground position really needs to come down to this location and so everything's going to shift down and so let me see if I can kind of show that um, where is it? so here's a picture of that getting a little bit close let me bring it down get a little bit bigger here Let's see if we can get a pretty good feel for it. this is that link shifted down and um, still in its current location so you can kind of see where it came from and where it's going so here's the original cognate this is the original linkage that drew out the coupler path kind of right here that we like it was kind of drawing this kind of oval here and here's that new co um, cognate number three notice it shares this ground position with the original right and it has this new ground position here and this is the coupler point for both of these cognates and so what we need to do is shift because this link and the original crank here for cognate one have the same angular velocity and so what we need to do is is kind of shift everything so this H is going to shift down to A which is going to bring G down which is going to bring the F down and everything's going to come down and that's what was done here that's what you're seeing here this is this cognate just shift it down and so you see the G has become J the H has come down with the A the E came down here to I and that's the coupler point this point and this point are both the coupler points and then the F came down to K and the C came down to L and so now what I can do is I can delete this one and then just have this guy and our original and I think that's done on our next page here one of these pages here okay and so here what you're seeing is I've deleted the one that was up here and now we just have the one that was shifted down and so we see our cognate here with a crank with an output and then we see our original cognate one here and our two positions and here's our new link this would be our new link eight that's going to be that parallel link that's not going to move as this linkage moves up and down so we're almost there and if you recall there's some extra links here that we really don't need um, the examples of those are we really don't need this link this link or this link we can get rid of all those can come straight over here and then just have a triangular shaped link here and so we're gonna get rid of this guy this guy and this guy and we can see that in another one of our figures and here's that figure and let me just get rid of some stuff here to get a better feel for what's going on okay so we've gotten rid of um, some of those other links and remember we came straight over we have our E shaped I'm sorry our triangular shaped link here we have our original um, cognate with the coupler point and this new coupler point that came about by shifting the cognate number three down and so now we're ready to rotate and we should see two identical um, coupler paths being traced out let me move this one down a little bit Make it maybe a little bit bigger and let's go and so in here we see those parallel motions and notice our um, new link 8 is not rotating it's just staying where it is um, which would allow us now to put on that um, um, that uh, example I was talking about where we have a flashlight perhaps so we install a flashlight here and that flashlight is always going to remain pointed directly at the wall because this link is not shifting in terms of its orientation okay now any differences or any shift that we actually see in this link as it rotates around or any difference in size here is is related to just the fact that I'm doing all of this on the force effect motion and so everything's probably not it might not have been perfect what I shifted I might not have shifted it perfectly along a straight line and so maybe there's a little bit of turn a little bit of twist on a real CAD package of course everything would be lined up perfectly and you'd have a perfectly still um, um, link here this link 8 that rotates as this thing goes around
And that's the conclusion of our um, discussion of parallel motion linkages.